Support Laneside. Get something cool. Hey everybody and welcome to another edition of Laneside Reviews. As always, I'm the bearded beast, Rob Johnson, joined once again by Scoops Porter. And we've got some really exciting stuff to show you on this episode, so why don't we take it Laneside and see how it's stacked up. Alright guys, here is Wayne Porter, our speed dominant player. He's bowling on the easy house shot. Yeah, this is the easy china. And, uh... Man, that ball really, really floated through. Uh, for our speed dominant player, we don't see a lot of high RG balls, do we? No, no, they don't need that extra help, that extra length. Yeah, length. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. when we talk about higher RG cores, we're talking about cores that are we usually say two five two or higher. A lot of people say two five four or higher. Yeah. Uh, but these are cores that don't spin up as easily yeah um they get down they tend to get down lane a lot easier without kind of revving up they store a little bit more energy down lane Yeah, they just delay when they get to slow down oh look right? at that oh well, there's a strike there's a strike yeah now um for our higher rg equipment we don't usually like to put it into our uh, our speed dominant players. Yeah, it doesn't slow down. It doesn't start reading the core very quickly. Uh, or sorry, reading the lane very yeah. quickly, which means the ball is going to get way down lane before it hooks. Yeah, I mean you can put surface on it, but it's still not uh, really going to yeah, slow down the same yeah. way. I mean we're talking like 360, 180 maybe to to get it really the way a speed dominant bowler really needs it to yeah. go, right? Because you can see right there after that strike. Wayne moved right a little bit yeah. um, to try to play it more down and in like a traditional speed, speed dominant player. Yeah. And you can see that thing just overreacted. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like playing like um, a cliff shot all the time with the ball. You you make your adjustment because it didn't hook up as much, and yep. then it reacts differently down lane. And it, it, it's all down lane, right? Well, and that's a really good point about the cliff shot. If you think about a speed dominant player, we need this ball to slow down earlier. Yeah. If we've got a ball that does not slow down, the core does not spin up as easily. Um, you can see you got well, there. You go, yeah, back yeah. The left a little bit. Yeah. Um, if you can't get that ball to slow down, oftentimes when you hit the pocket, especially on the fresh, you're going to see more ten pins. Yeah. Um, that the ball is just not going to get into a roll. You can really lean on the surface. Yeah. And get it to slow down a little bit, but you're never going to get that same reaction that you see out of a low RG. Ball. No, exactly. Yeah. And that's just a, a matchup thing. It's, yep. I mean, like we said, we've said lots of times, there's no bad balls, just they don't fit either bowlers or the, the patterns, right? That's right? And that's generally, that's not what this ball was made for. Yep. Now, speed dominant players don't fret uh, on a tournament condition where you've got a defined hook point. Yeah, there's another one. Yeah, it's gonna look a lot better yeah. than on a house shot. I'm talking about on a house shot. Yeah. It's not going to be. It would not be what I would consider the first ball out of your. Bag. No, exactly. Yeah. Now you get later in the block, maybe in the block in your set. set yeah. Um, looking at game three, where you have that defined friction, where the ball is starting to get too early. Yeah. Now that's definitely a great spot for this ball yeah. for your speed dominant player, but once again, you have to be aware of what your lane condition is, how they're breaking down. Yeah, and like you said, like sports patterns or like tournament patterns that are like... Oh, look, you know, see? Well, yeah, like 32 feet or shorter, and you get into the short patterns that are like s walled across, yep. right? Like you said, you got that big area for the ball to hit and slow down in, so... Now, here is our left-handed speed dominant player, and I think... I find watching it left-handed, you get a, a better indication. You can see it's, it's it just... going, going, going. But it never seems to really make that huge move. Yeah. Um, and that is indicative of the high RG ball in the speed dominant player. It's not going to slow down on that same speed. Yeah, exactly. Now, here is Wayne with our lower RG benchmark ball. Yeah. You can see... Well, yeah. <laughs> he's doing a little dance there, but you can yeah. see it was a little bit earlier. And here's the overlay. This is where you can really see the difference. You can just watch it travel. Almost in the same place. Yeah. Much different motions. Yeah. They're they're on the same track, but they're different motions. Yeah. And it's a little bit harder to see, but it did go down just a touch. And just in case you didn't yeah. see it, here are the different strikes 
that wanes through. And you can see, no matter if he went inside or outside, that break point was all about the same, the same spot, spot yeah. much farther down lane. Yeah. Now then, here is our matched player, and I think this one was a l looked a little bit better in your hands. Yeah. I mean, I've thrown um, higher RG stuff for, like, the the Melee series. Oh, well, yeah, you love um, the red one. Yeah, the red one was just phenomenal. Um, there's a time and place for them, of course. Yep. But I did enjoy – this one was – it was there. Yep. Yep. Um, well, for higher RG Actually, yeah. balls, they, they get through the fronts yeah. a little easier. Yeah. When they're not slowing down for the speed dominant player, for the yeah. match player, it's allowing you to get through if the if the fronts are a little more chewed up. Yeah. You can see I got in a little bit deeper there. And that's what we're talking about on a fresher pattern where you don't get that little bit earlier roll. Yep. It, you know, you can get those those tens. You're going to get those blower tens. Now, yeah. that's you coming out underneath the yeah. ball. Now, obviously, we can force a little bit more shape yeah. out of it by getting a little more round. Yeah. But with these higher RG cores, you still have to be uh, you still have to be aware of the fact that if you don't have that friction down lane, if you don't have yeah. that spot to get it to slow down, yeah. it ain't gonna do it. Well that's what I mean. Coming around like that, you see it shaped up. Yep. Right? But you also like you said, you have to watch because coming around the ball is gonna force it to go down a little bit further too. Uh -huh. You're creating a more angular entry Reaction. angle. Yep. Yeah. But you're, yeah, you're pushing the ball down to do it as well. So, And when you're coming around the ball more, you're going to be more susceptible to the over-under, the yeah. wet-dry. So you have to, once again, we're talking about making sure you have that defined friction point, point. that you're throwing yeah. it to, where you know it, you need it to slow down there. Exactly. Rather than up, up lane. Yeah. Now here you are, you've moved three and two deeper, getting rounder, and this is where you see that high RG core. You see yeah. it, it yeah. just didn't have that friction point down yeah. lane. Get it into game two, game three. Yeah. Much different story. Exactly, yeah. Something that's going to, you know, you have the front speed up a little bit more where you can start, or the pattern starts coming towards you, you know. Yep. And you can see you can see how much more angular it was yeah. when it read it. It was. It's still a long hook phase in an, a symmetrical ball. Yeah. But it's much more angular than you're going to see out of our benchmark ball yeah. here. Now, this is one of the things I do like. Uh, one of the changes that, that we've done, being able to compare it to something else. Yeah. Uh, compare it to a low differential benchmark style ball. Yeah. Your Intel, your IQ, your bonus. Um, you can see just how much further down it went and then turn that corner. Yeah, right it's about three down. feet longer, about five boards, more total hook. Yeah. But still in that same area. Now, here I am. Um, now, one thing I'm going to be very upfront about, I laid on the surface on this. After watching Nick, after watching Wayne, uh, I know that with my tilt, the way that that uh, the ball sees the lane, it was going to be hugely over under. Yeah. It has a little bit of shine to that cover when it comes out. So all I did is I took one of our CTD pads, uh, one of our true cut pads, and I just hit it with a fresh 2000. So rather than having a little bit of shine to it, it was going to be a little more matte with a truer 2000 finish. A little bit more grip. That's like, right. You know, get rid of the some of the shine out of the box yep. stuff. And now, higher RG cores for players like myself are really good because you can lay on the surface and they're not going to slow down on the front. Yeah. The lower the RG, the lower the tilt, the more it's going to read the heads, the more it's going to be susceptible to... Uh, when your head start to go out. Yeah. This one, you can see I've laid on a, a lot of surface on it, and I'm still able to s play it fairly. You can see I played it straight. I'm going to hook it a little bit more and a little, a little bit more. more. Yeah. Yeah, it just gives you, because of how low um, your tilt, tilt is yep. and how early you have the ball roll and your higher rev rate, that all leads to the ball picking up sooner anyways. Yep. And then putting the surface on it really give you a very controlled... Um, starting point, I think. Like, and there you go. Like, you you see, I'm yeah. playing this with a lot of forward roll. Yeah. So my my this is my lowest tilt point. This is where I'm closer to zero. Yeah. The ball is definitely not getting bogged down on the front. It's getting to the hook point. Normally, that far inside, that would have you know just hit like a marshmallow. Yeah. Pinged off. Get your flat ten. 
and that's that still yeah. drove through. And that's the benefit of the higher RG, where you, it has the down lane. It has the energy still. Yep. Because it's not slowing down as early and using all that um, kinetic energy or potential energy. Potential energy. Potential energy up. So kinetic energy is what make it go boom. <laughs> so I'm going to keep moving left here. And you can see at this point, it's getting there, but it's starting to it's starting to get a little yeah, bit flatter. Little. I'm gonna have to start to get around it a little bit more to get this thing to to strike, but I'm okay with that. Yeah, that's a lot of boards to cover too. You think about it, it's on a sport pattern. That's a ton of yeah, yeah. On a house shot, I think on house shots, I think that your rev dominant players are gonna eat this ball alive. And I yeah, think we've seen that with some score scores, scores. Yeah. I think on tournament patterns, the matched players, this ball is going to be insane. Yeah. And I think we've seen that in the tournament the scores. scores. Yeah. It's been a lot of good scores come out with this one. But this is another one of those very specific pieces of equipment. I find that a lot with higher RG balls. Though. You can they, see, finally, yeah. I'm, now I'm going to have to start getting around it. Yeah. That one blew through. Clear, yeah. But that's the higher RG balls. When you get a good one... Mm -hmm. A lot of times it is shot specific, like for a good sports pattern, like a medium or short, or yep. you know, like like you said, like later in a block or something like that. Like when I used to throw the red, I used to be able to throw into like uh, a game two after the pattern's been beat up and stuff <coughs> like that, and it was like my go-to ball to to stay where I was. I think I was throwing the reacts pearl at the time. Yep. So it was like bouncing off each other with those two balls. So. So here I am with our benchmark. You can see I play it pretty straight. That's what I want. I want something I can control that yeah. I can keep in front of me. Uh, and now here we go with the inf the infamous. And for me, once again, you can see it's about a five board difference. Yeah. For me, the break point was the same, just much more angular. Yeah, and it was a little bit wider. You could see. So very. When you talk about stuff about a tournament ball, yeah. a shot specific ball. This is one that you may not throw all the time, but when you need it, you need it. That's what makes it infamous. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a show. So until next time, guys, we'll see you lane side.